Today we're talking about the DJI O3e unit and specifically its power consumption and how much current it draws from your back or your flight controller. Now this video actually replaces one I put out a few days ago because there's actually a mistake in that video. Whilst the power draw I showed you at 12 watts was correct, it turns out that my ear unit wasn't actually in its maximum RF power output mode. There is a quirk with the O3e unit that when turning off low power mode, it doesn't actually output the maximum RF power. It is only when it receives an arming command from the flight controller does it kick it into full power. And if you're using the ham file, you're going to need to make sure that you are using MSP because you're not going to get that maximum RF power unless it is getting that command from the flight controller. The testing I did was on the bench and I was using the RF low power mode to turn it on and off via the goggles and as a result of that it meant I hadn't actually got it configured to draw the maximum current. So what I've done, I've gone back, I've done all the testing again and today I'm going to share with you the results. Now just before I jump into it I just want to say if you find this video useful or interesting please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon in the description. It is only through the support of my patrons am I able to keep making content like this. If we get something wrong, we go back, we do it again, just like we're doing here today. And if you'd like to support us in doing that, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, let's get on with it. Let's take a look at the new testing method first of all, look at what the current draw is, and then at the end, I will share with you my thoughts. Now obviously as people are getting their hands on this new ear unit they're going to be installing it either in their existing aircraft or building a new aircraft to use it with. The first thing you're going to need to take into account when integrating this into your system is its voltage and current requirements. The voltage input range is 7.4 to 26.4 so basically 2 to 6s and you can run it directly off VBAT. However a lot of people are going to be integrating this with their existing flight controller that already has a dedicated digital port, a flight controller that has a back or buying a new flight controller that has a port that is compatible allowing for quick and easy plug and play installation with the included cable. What though you need to be aware of is the current draw of this ear unit more than anything because it does draw 40% more power than we've seen from the previous FPV system and that is potentially going to cause some problems. In a minute what I'll actually do is show you the kind of current draw that you can get from this ear unit. Now here I've got a flight controller which is my bench one that I use which is from one of my little whoops and the nice thing with this flight controller is it does have a pre-wired digital VTX pin. It was designed to be used with the Vista and it actually plug and play straight with the DJI new O3 ear unit without a problem and this is where people are going to run into issues because whilst it does plug in and work this cannot supply enough current for this ear unit when in normal use with everything on. The situation very much would be the same with a build such as this and whilst I'd be able to get the ear unit in you need to make sure that the back on the flight controller is capable of providing enough power. So before we actually do the test, just to explain what's going on, we have our O3 ear unit this time connected to a flight controller. The reason it's connected to the flight controller is we need to be able to arm the flight controller to trigger the output on the O3 ear unit. It turns out that turning off low power mode doesn't actually kick the O3 ear unit to its maximum RF power even with the hack file. You actually have to have an arming command from the flight controller before it goes to the maximum RF output. This has caused me all sorts of strange issues over the last few days in my testing and it was only once I found this was I able to understand some of the issues I was facing. As a result of that though, those original power tests I did weren't 100% correct because the ear unit wasn't on its maximum output and that's why I'm going to do it again today. Now the setup is the power supply is going to be set to 8 volts. The ear unit does accept down to 7.4 but I'm going to use 8 volts because that's probably about the lowest most people will go to but we might do a quick run on 7.4 volts before the video ends as well. It is then wired through the multimeter which will give us a display reading over here. This is only measuring the ear unit. The fan and nothing else is going through this so the current draw we see on the meter 
is the current draw of the ear unit itself. As for the configuration on the ear unit, we have the system set to 4K 100 frames a second, set to record to the SD card slot, which draws a little bit more power, and we've got Rocksteady tuned on as well. So what will happen is the second we arm the ear unit, it is going to be drawing the most current it basically can. So we'll kick in the power supply, first of all, We've kicked it into eight volts. We'll wait for the ear unit to boot up. What we should see is some current draw appear on the multimeter over here. Probably get to five, 600 milliamps once it settles in my tests. That's really the standby current that the ear unit tends to draw. I've currently obviously got this fan here blowing ear over it because this thing does get very, very hot. And we're gonna need that. So when we kick it into the maximum output, we're then able to keep it cool and be able to take a good measurement. So what I'm going to do is just check my goggles to make sure everything's kicked in correctly and wait for it to actually connect. There we go, it has, so I can see it on the display. And what we're going to do now is actually kick it into the arming position and that will kick it into the maximum RF output. So I've just kicked the switch into the arming mode and there you can see that it has jumped up substantially. We're up to 1.68 amps, 1.67, 1.68. I've done these tests several times on the bench. If I just move the camera a little bit, I have seen it as much as 1.71 amps of current draw at eight volt, which is approximately 14 watts of output when the system is set to 8 volts. In fact here, you're seeing it increase as much as 1.74, so it is clear compared to what I was reading last time, this higher RF output level is having an effect. The basics of this is, the message I'm going to give you is you need a back at minimum of 2 amps for use with this system. Depending on what the back voltage is will depend on what you're going to need. And what I would suggest you do is use that 14 watts as a maximum. Use that in something like an Ohm's law calculator to give yourself a reflection of current that it's going to use at the voltage you're choosing. But if you go along the lines of a two amp back at anything above eight volts, it will be absolutely fine. Obviously, you could run this off battery power direct if you wanted to, so take it directly from your flight pack. The look, it's up to 1.8 amps. Wow, we're really starting to increase now. We're seeing that current draw increase as we're watching it. So again, you can see at that minimum-ish voltage level, you really do need to make sure that you have a back of at least two amps to allow it to be able to cope with this ear unit. Okay, now just to quickly demonstrate this on the minimum input voltage at 7.4, this is about as low as you're gonna get. If I now flick it into the arming mode and we should start to see the current draw increase. Again, we can see now about 1.8 amp, roughly 14 watts. We're seeing 14, 15 watts at that eight volt territory. So again, you wanna make sure the back you're using is that two amp minimum at eight to sort of 10 volts. When you're getting up to 12 volts, you're getting a bit more headroom, but personally, try to find a flight controller that can deliver that two amps, and that way you're not going to have a problem. Now, obviously with the O3E unit, there are a few options with regards to power. It does support up to 6S input, which means you can power it directly from VBAT. Personally though, I don't like powering expensive digital ear units from VBAT simply because of the risk of transients, spikes, and other issues that could cause it to burn out in a crash. I personally, if I am going to run one on VBAT, always use something called a spike absorber or a TVS diode. They're available from companies such as FatTech, and it's my experience they do make a difference and for the cost it simply isn't worth the risk when you're spending so much on an ear unit. For me though I personally prefer to power them off a of back simply because it puts in that additional layer of protection and as long as it's rated fine there is no reason it's going to cause any problems at all but if you don't have a choice and want to go VBAT there's no reason you can't but I would get yourself a TVS diode or a spike absorber just to protect that investment that you've made. 
Okay, so as you've seen, the current draw is actually higher than I said in that original video. Whereas before I said at about 8 volts it was 12 watts, reality is, when arming properly through the flight controller, it can be as high as 15 watts at 8 volts. Now, it is going to depend on what voltage you're using, and I'm going to try and keep this as simple as I can. If you're using a output on your flight controller or back below 12 volts, I recommend a minimum of 2 amps. If you're using 12 volts or above, 1.5 amps should be fine, but I would be targeting backs that are capable of 2 amp pretty much across the board. And the thing to always remember is, it's 15 watts of power. You can go and get yourself a Ohm's Law calculator and do the calculation yourself if you want to. But if you stick to that rule of below 12 volts, 2 amps, over 12 volts, 1.5, you shouldn't go far wrong. Now, as I've said, I've taken down that original video because of the mistake in it, and that issue that I've now discovered with it not entering low power mode, or sorry, maximum output mode, until you actually arm the flight controller, really has caused me some issues over the last week, and it's meant I've had to go back and make some changes to various pieces of content, but I always want to make sure that the information that I am giving you is correct and is accurate, and now today, I am 100% that what I'm showing you is correct. So again, 15 watts, that's what you should be aiming on. And hopefully you can use that data now to be able to build your aircraft and make sure that you don't get problems. Now, if you have found this video useful and you'd like to support us, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon in the description. It is only through the support of my patrons I'm able to keep making content like this on the channel. I want to say a massive thank you to every single person that does support us on Patreon, but I also want to say a thank you to everyone who has donated via Buy Me A Coffee as well. And if you'd like to support us to keep making independent content like this, please do consider checking out the links in the description. Anyway, let me know what you think about this. Comments in the below. I will try and answer any questions you may have. Anyway, that's it for me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.